if you guys didn't see the caption of what this training is all about, let me just reiterate what this is all about. So a couple weeks ago, we did a training about how to build short-term income and how to make that quick money right from our weekly paychecks, Thursday to Thursday. And we, uh, Josh went live and talked about how to capitalize basically on our jump start commissions through my daily choice compensation plan. But we didn't go into other aspects of the compensation plan, specifically how to create long-term income and how to create a long-term sustainable business. So this uh, call isn't going to be too much focused on income necessarily, but uh, I'm going to give you guys some strategies, tips, and tricks on how to build a long-term business and, uh, you know, just some things that I've learned along the way. <laughs> and, you know, I've been in this company for almost six years now. And I've been in this industry for maybe 15 years now, and I've seen a lot. And I've been through the ringer, ups and downs, highs and lows. And I want to just give you guys some advice and some just solid training on how to build this thing for more than three months or 60 days or, you know, 30 days, how to build this thing for good once and for all and uh, commit to your business. So we're gonna talk about that today. I see everybody's piling on. So hello everybody. Thank you for telling me where you guys are coming from. Seeing some people from Pennsylvania, Utah, Virginia, Kentucky. We got California in the house, Florida, Australia. Oh Lord, Oregon, Texas. Okay, we are all here and we're all connected. So thankfully uh, we've been rocking these Zooms out for the last few events. I know you guys saw announcement that the rest of our events um, as far as road shows go is going to be on the virtual format as well but we love these it's such a great way to reach just a multitude of people uh, one of our road shows we went live and got over a hundred thousand views by the time we were finished with the whole road show so these are very very effective ways of getting to people quickly so super excited about that um, you guys we are having, I don't know if you guys know this, my fan is on by the way, so my papers are blowing around, but I don't know if you guys know this, but we're having a record breaking month this month. And I know this uh, video is going to be uploaded to our back office later, so if you're watching the replay on the future of this, then you're going to be like, what month was that? Well, this is April. So of course, 420 is like one of our favorite holidays. Josh and I celebrate, we are cannabis fans for sure, that's why we went into the CBD industry. But what an amazing time in our lives right now. We've got the whole world pretty much quarantined. And here we just, here is MDC just blowing through ranks, volumes just, uh, you know, through the roof. And it, we just couldn't be more stoked to see the success of all of our affiliates and our company as a whole. So kudos to you guys for taking part of that and sharing these products with everybody. Not just 420 though. You guys, what's crazy is we launched My Daily Choice with sprays, <laughs> literally three, three sprays, and then we went all the way up to six sprays. And now they are flying off the shelves like you wouldn't believe. I see a lot of people doing um, weight loss challenges and groups and things like that, and the Trim 365 is just flying out of the warehouse, and I'm just seeing everybody dropping pounds so of course I'm six months pregnant right now so I won't be participating on that journey just yet but I'll be with you guys in the next couple months as I deliver this baby and all that good stuff so let's get on to our training I see we've got over a thousand people on now and I'm so excited to bring this topic to you guys today so like I said we've already talked about jump starts Josh gave some amazing examples on how to kind of you know build your organization wide before you go deep I know we use the four by four model a lot if you haven't heard that watch our older videos and you'll see what I'm talking about but that's basically go recruit four and they teach them how to recruit four right we built that but in the examples Josh used on the last you know two trainings ago two videos before this one uh, he talked about jumpstart commissions and how to go wide go build 10 wide 25 wide and build your organization out that way to capitalize on those quick commissions right Thursday to Thursday so now we're going to go into a little bit more uh, how to build deep right and how to build that monthly income okay so 
we're going to dive deep into some of these things. I'm actually going to even attempt to do math with you guys today, which if those of you who know me know that's definitely not my strong suit <laughs> for sure. I'm definitely a visual learner, um, but we're going to do what we can <laughs> do today. I see you guys are like, yeah, I don't do math either. Well, if I can do it, you can do it. So we're going to do it together. Okay. But before we get into the specifics on um, the binary and how to build your business, you know, month to month, uh, I want to give you guys a little bit of things to think about before we jump into that. So you can't build a long-term business, right, unless you've got long-term vision. Now, regardless of why you joined, some of us joined because we've just been laid off. Some of us have joined because we've been in network marketing the last however many years and we found our way into My Daily Choice. Some of us joined because of a product promotion or a sale or whatever the reason is that brought you here. Now it's time to start thinking about long-term vision, right? Let's start talking about and thinking about how we're going to build our business sustainably for years to come, right? And that's absolutely possible here with My Daily Choice. I'm proof of that. My paycheck comes from the compensation plan, just like yours guys does. And I built this thing as an affiliate since 2014 and kind of worked my way up, right, Through, throughout the years. So I was not able to do that until I had a long-term vision for myself, right? Because my previous network marketing experience, I was in and out of different companies, experienced all kinds of different things. And, you know, I'd never really stayed long enough to actually have the vision to build my business the way that it is right now, initially, before I joined My Daily Choice. So when I joined My Daily Choice, Josh is actually my mentor, right? He's my mentor along this MLM journey, this network marketing journey. And he taught me how to think about network marketing differently than I had been previously thinking about it. So let me just tell you about a little bit how I was. And I'm telling you guys this because I know you guys can relate. And I know that you've got maybe people on your team that can relate. But before I met Josh, <laughs> let me just tell you I was as a networker right? Okay. He had to straighten me out. I'm just going to keep it real. He had to really straighten me out. I was like a wild child. And anytime there was an issue, right, in a company I was with before, I would just quit. It's like, okay, this is not for me. I would find a reason to quit. <laughs> I was like so good at it. Like, oh, well, they didn't ship my product fast enough. I'm out. Oh, they didn't do this quick enough. I'm done. Oh, my paycheck, you know, isn't as big as I thought it was going to be. I'm done. And I just looked for excuses, really, to sabotage my own success. I was in that situation before I came to my day of choice and I got a mentor, Josh, right? So some of us know what that's like. We've been there before. And maybe some of us are like, oh, my God, that's me now. <laughs> but I'm here to tell you that things can change very, very rapidly in your life if you focus on your long-term vision. So let's talk about that for a sec. You must have vision beyond your current reality. So I was so sold on my current situation. Now, when I first joined as an affiliate of My Daily Choice, I was behind on my rent, okay? I was just trying to make ends meet, trying to put food on the table. I was trying to feed my kids, my two sons that I had who were ages four and eight, I believe, at the time. And, you know, my whole world was just completely flipped upside down. And by the time I was already well, I guess 27, 28 years old, I had already felt like I lived an entire lifetime up before I even got to that point. And I had a number of jobs. I had just got out of the military and I was just trying to make things work, you know? So I couldn't really see beyond my current reality. I could only see based on my past experiences. Some of us get stuck there, right? I know I don't speak for everybody, but I'm speaking, you know, for those that who need to hear this message. But right now, I know a lot of us are in a situation where it's very, very hard to see outside of our current situation, right? And that's because all of us are stuck in our houses right now. And all of us are experiencing hardship in one way or the other, right? All of us are trying to feed our families right now. We're trying to, to do better and know, know met better for our families. And I understand that. I was there myself, and no, I wasn't forced in my house or anything like that, but back then, my income was a very limiting thing for me, and it was very hard for me to get outside of my own mindset into a bigger and better vision for myself. So, you guys, without vision, 
without your vision for how you're going to be in the future and how your business is going to look, you won't be able to build a long-term sustainable business, period. You have to be able to see it before it's actually here. This is the most craziest, hardest thing to do. So that's why it's the first thing on my list. I've got five things to bring to you guys today, but this is number one. Number one is you must have a vision beyond your current reality. If you're sitting here today and you're feeling like I'm stuck, you know, or, you know, I, I need to, you know, do something different than what I've been doing, then this is for you because anybody at any time can decide to shift their reality based on the vision that they hold true in their mind. So you guys, you can't run your business blindfolded, you know, and I find that people join people with vision more than they join any other reason. They join people that have a vision, that know where they're going, that have their sights set for where they're going. And that's so important as a network marketing leader to have vision not only for yourself, but for your team and for the future success that you're going to be a part of. Now, something crazy now some of us before I go into this crazy thing that happened to me today um, some of us are thinking my goal is to be super affiliate we're thinking just based on our rank alone right and I, and I want you to think beyond that okay I want you to get crystal clear beyond just your rank now you could say it to yourself a million times I'm gonna be a super affiliate right and that's great and I do think that you should have rank based goals you should also have life based goals that are gonna help you catapult uh, your way to super affiliate and beyond, right? So here's what I mean by that. This literally happened today because I'm sitting here writing my training out and I was thinking what better way to get clear on your vision than by building a vision board, right? We've heard this. If you guys seen The Secret before, then you've probably made a vision board before, a dream board, and I know that I've been doing this since forever, since I was 18 years old, ever since I saw the secret for the first time I started making my own vision board now back then I was cutting out of magazines pasting it on cork boards or whatever and just literally putting it in front of my consciousness every single day um, now today we have technology and I'm lazy <laughs> with cutting and pasting <laughs> although there's there's a lot to be said to do that if you're gonna actually do that do that but I use the online one right and I actually made one in 2016 an online vision board and I'm telling you guys this because this is nuts but this is how it works okay so here's what I was doing to prepare for this training today I googled online vision boards because I've been using just a different one this whole time and I wanted to see what else was out there I thought maybe technology's got better since I last used the one I used and I came across an article that said the seven best online vision boards right so I'm, I don't click on the first one. I don't know why. I go straight to the second one and I click on that link. <laughs> and it takes me to dreamitalive.com, okay? I just thought that was like a cool name. So I click on it randomly. I click on it and it asks me to sign in through my Facebook. I do it. Why not? Because I'm too lazy to put in my logins and all that stuff. And I, don't, I didn't think I actually had an account here because I didn't recognize the name. So I click on it through my Facebook and lo and behold, it logs me in and I'm somehow into this back office and I have an old vision board sitting there, an old one that I haven't seen since 2016. <laughs> so now I'm looking at all these things on my vision board and I'm going to read them to you. I'm going to read you guys a couple things on this board. And the reason why is because I want you to know how specific you need to be with your goals. So I'm reading these things. Can I just tell you guys? I hit every single thing on my vision board except for one thing. And the one thing I didn't hit, it said, I'm going to tell you actually, it said I achieved success in my own life and I'm ready to write about it. So in 2016, I was not successful. Okay, I was honestly, I feel like on the verge of a mental breakdown. I was turning 30 years old. I hit rock bottom. I feel like I had just the weight of the world on my shoulders. And it was in that year that I decided I need to start shifting the way I look at things. I need to start developing my mindset so that I can actually get out of my own way. Like I had this awareness to do these things. And I created this vision board as I'm in the lowest of my lows and trying to think my way out of my situation, right? So I achieved everything on my list except for this one because I knew that I had to be successful before I even started this project. And it said I achieved success in my own life and I'm ready to write about it. 
my book. And now I'm writing a book right now. So I've achieved success and now I'm writing about it right now. So how crazy, right? But let me just read to you guys because you need to know how specific your vision needs to be. It's more than just writing super affiliate or you know master affiliate or 50K affiliate on a board, all right? Here's some of the ones that I wrote down that have come true. Okay, you ready? I'm checking my bank account and I'm crying happy tears that I've finally broken through everything holding me back. I finally hit six figures a year from home doing what I love. I finally have money left over at the end of the month that I've saved for my retirement. I finally have financial security. That was written on my, my vision board in 2016. Since then, I've hit seven figures through the, my daily choice comp plan. And I'm not here to make promises or income claims or anything like that. I'm just letting you know what was on my vision board and what's actually happened. Another thing that I wrote on my board was I'm shopping in Summerlin. This is crazy, right? Because I live here now. Well, I live in Henderson, which is close to Summerlin. And for the first time, I don't have to check my bank account to see how much I have. I can buy what I want and look good, feel good, and feel content knowing I achieved all that I set out to. See how specific these are. Now, of course, I know that's a petty goal, but for some of us, that's, that's, our, that's our goal, right? I had all these goals. And before, you know, not even financial goals, you guys, I had relationship goals in there as well. At this time, I wasn't married to Josh yet. He was on my vision board. I told him today, I was like, I manifested you. You didn't even have a choice. Like, I already put it on here. Look, <laughs> right here, it says I'm marrying you. And the ring that I had on my vision board was the exact ring that I have today. So nobody can tell me that vision is not important because vision is so important. Because if you don't see where you're going, then how do you know when you get there? <laughs> right? How do you know when you get there? And I'm telling you guys this to bring you some hope because some of us are in a mind or in a mindset right now where everything seems dark. And I'm here to tell you that the light is at the end of the tunnel if you choose to see it. So we're gonna start with vision, you guys. So today, this week, take action, build your vision board out because you cannot create a long-term business without long-term vision. All right, let's move on to number two, you guys. Number two, you have to decide to become a professional network marketer. You got to go pro. That's what Eric Worre says all the time. All right. You got to decide to go pro. Some of us want to hit the top of the comp plan. We want to have the top of the income, uh, you know, comp plan income, but we don't want to decide to be professionals at this. Right. We don't want to be professionals at this. We want to be the way we already are. We don't want to make any changes in our lives, but we do want to have the income uh, that comes along with it. Right. But we don't want to actually change. Um, but I'm here to tell you that I could not hit super affiliate and it's not even the top master affiliate is still out there, right? But I could not get to where I am right now until I decided to become a professional period. I had to become a professional network marketer. Well, there's a lot to be said about that right now. Some of us are nervous about becoming a leader. We're nervous about going live on Facebook. We're nervous about doing zoom calls like the one I'm doing right now, but I'm here to tell you that there's worse people out there that have done more things because they believe that they could do it. And I told myself that a lot on the way up, okay? I was like, if they can do it, I can do it. And if I can do it, you can do it. So you've got to decide to be a professional network marketer. So here's a few things I'm going to say about that. Ready? Post what pays you. <laughs> All right? Post what pays you. Don't post what distracts everybody that follows you. I know that's very tempting in a time like now when there's so many conversations happening all at the same time about everything that's on the news right now. But post what pays you because if this is your business and you're a professional, then you got to post what pays you, not what pays the people that are putting the agenda out there for you to repeat. That's not going to help you build your business. In fact, when I look at the rank advances that have happened in our company in the last few days, I'm seeing a trend. People are promoting their business. They're promoting positivity. They're promoting different product lines that we have in our business. They're not posting things that are irrelevant. They're not posting things that are not helpful. I mean, it is our job as professional network marketers to be putting out value, right? 
and people will follow you if you're consistently giving them value on your page. I know I've said this uh, in prior trainings, but I totally believe it, okay? As we're all sitting at home watching Netflix, okay? Just imagine your Facebook page is your Netflix channel, all right, or whatever you want to say. Maybe it's your Starbucks or whatever you want to look at it. Maybe it's your magazine that you're running or your own. it's your own personal media outlet, right? So what are you putting out there to broadcast to everybody else? You have to give value. If you're not giving value, then you have to really question yourself, why am I posting this? Am I posting it for me? because it's how I feel right now at the moment, or am I posting it for everybody else to see that's going to help them in some way? So we've got to think about that. As professional network marketers, you see the top leaders um, that have been in network marketing for a number of years that have maybe have success in, in companies, uh, no matter where they end up, they always find success, right? You see the trends on how they're posting, and it's not craziness all the time because that doesn't help them get a paycheck. So like I said, post what pays you. Number two is, these are sub topics by the way of number two. But the second thing is, is become a leader, not just a product pusher. Now, pushing products is amazing for business. <laughs> okay, we have a sale. Of course, you're gonna let everybody know about it. You have a testimony. Of course, you're gonna let everybody know about it. But what happens when people are tired of hearing about that product. Now, thankfully in our business, we've got a lot of products. So you can literally just shift from one product to the next and you'll never get tired of things to say. <laughs> people won't ever get tired of things to hear from you because we've got so many different things. It wasn't always like that. At one point we had three sprays and that was it. So I had to learn very early on to differentiate myself as a leader by promoting my leadership, not just all about products all the time. Because at the end of the day, right, uh, if everybody's saying the same thing about product, 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 that's exciting and it creates momentum in the time, for the time, but then they have to decide which leader to follow, right? And you're competing literally with all the other affiliates out there. So why would they choose you versus somebody else? Why would they choose Aaron Parker versus Judy Stallings versus Robert Hollis versus all of our leaders that we have in our business? Why would they choose you? You have to decide to become a leader because leaders are the ones that people follow, right? And leaders are the ones that take this thing to the top. And leaders create sustainable businesses, at, you know, when it's all said and done. People join people. They don't just join products. And while it is amazing to promote your products, it's also important to promote yourself, okay? it's very important to promote yourself. And if you're nervous about that, then that just means you've got a little more work to do. And you know, leadership is literally a personal development journey. <laughs> as you are developing yourself as a person, you're becoming a better leader because you're able to give solid advice to people that follow you. All right, so the next thing is create momentum outside of company efforts. Create momentum outside of the company efforts. Now, Josh and I can sit here all day and launch sale after sale. I mean, not really, but you know what I mean? Um, <laughs> we can do roadshows. We can do conventions. We can do all these things to help you build your business. But at some point, you're going to have to create momentum outside of the company efforts, outside of that. And I see a lot of people doing that right now. I'm seeing a lot of leaders getting very, very creative. And it's very refreshing to see. I'm seeing people selling Trim 365. I'm seeing people selling coffee and hair care and all these different things. People are getting really creative with how they're promoting their business. And that's amazing. And that's what you have to do in order to create a long-term business, right? Versus just waiting for the next sale. If you're dormant in your business until there's a sale or an announcement or something exciting to promote, then you're not gonna be having an excess of your income during those lean times when there maybe isn't an announcement or something exciting to tag along to, right? You've got to create the momentum yourself. You've got to create that passion yourself. Now, there was a long stretch where there were not a lot of exciting uh, announcements. Why is that? Well, because we grew up 1100% in one year. <laughs> we were literally building infrastructure and shipping product and doing all the things that we had to do to build this business. But what did we do? in between all that? How do people grow their businesses in between all that? You guys, I've realized that in network marketing, you've got to kind of reinvent yourself uh, regularly. 
it's kind of kind of wild. I had uh, you know uh, multiple groups, not at the same time, but my team group was always evolving and always changing because I had to because I had to differentiate myself as a leader. I had to level up my game as a leader in order to keep people engaged and motivated and wanting to build. As a leader, you've got to get creative and come up with things to create momentum in your team, right? That even if there's nothing going on in the company, and I'm not saying that all of a sudden we're going to just stop announcing things because we're not. We've got a lot of things left in store, which is exciting and very convenient. But to build your business through all the highs and the lows, you got to start thinking how to get creative in your business, right? All right, the next thing is be compliant. <laughs> you got to be compliant. If you've got short-term vision, maybe non-compliance is the way that you think is going to help you. But it's not because if you want a long-term business, you've got to be compliant. Otherwise, your business won't exist. And it not only won't exist for you, it won't exist for other people as well. So we've got to be compliant with product claims, income claims, all that good stuff. That's how we have to stay within our boundaries, right, in order to build our business successfully in the long term. The next thing I want to tell you guys is that this is a three to five year plan. Every, I think, network marketing company says that. And at least that's the time frame that worked out for me. Now, of course, there's superstars out there that are like, I don't need your three to five year. I'm going to do this in eight months <laughs> or nine months, right? And that's fine. And kudos to you if you can get it done quickly. I'm all for that. But just so you know that these people had to go all in, right? In order to get to the top, you've got to go all in, which brings me to my next point. And it's not just the time, right? It's the action and the focus that you have during that time as well. Because some people, they've been in the same network marketing company for, you know, 15 years and they're professional meeting attenders and they're the same rank. And because they don't ever level up their game, they'll never learn anything new and take action to get those results. So it's not necessarily about time, right? But it is a three year, three to five year plan here. So we have to think bigger than 30 days. We gotta think longer than 60 days when we're building our business. All right, so now I wanna shift a little bit. This is still within topic number two, which is become a professional network marketer, but I wanna shift a little bit. I've had uh, a few people ask me about this, so I wanted to bring it up today. Why running multiple MLMs is going to ruin your reputation. I'm going to bring that up. Yes, I am. We're going to talk about that right now. Because if you're going to build a long-term business, this is like the kiss of death for your business. And I'm going to tell you why I've been in this situation before. I've tried it before. I've failed miserably before. And let me just tell you how it ends up so you don't make the same mistake, okay? Some people call this multiple streams. It's not multiple streams. It's literally like cheating on yourself, <laughs> okay? It just doesn't work. And I can't, to this day, I know a lot of networkers, I do not know one network marketer, not one, that is successfully building two publicly, okay? I don't know, I don't know two. And here's why, because if you're building your team over here, and then you're like, oh, I'm going to add another business over here because I like whatever product they've got over here, whatever. Um, what happens is you end up ruining your reputation because now current team A over here is thinking, you just left us to go over here. And you cannot focus on two things at once, okay? You cannot. It doesn't work. If you chase two <laughs> rabbits, you'll lose them both, right? Okay, so let me just tell you guys, I tried this in the past. I, I did not do that, obviously, in uh, my daily choice for obvious reasons, but I've tried this in the past, and what happened was is I had people quitting both of my companies at the same time, and I had to repair my reputation as a networker by staying in one company for a long period of time. So yes, you can have multiple streams of income. I have multiple streams of income. I've got investments. I buy gold. I, I have real estate. Um, and I do all kinds of other things outside of MLM, but you do not have two MLM companies at the same time. The other reason why not to do that is you're going to be on the radar of compliance in both companies. <laughs> you're going to have two compliances after you at the same time. That's a lot of drama and a lot of headache that you don't want to go through. Take it from me. It's not worth it. And just so you guys know, if you're like, well, my reputation, whatever. No, listen, network marketing, you're in the reputation business. Your reputation is 
how you're creating your paycheck. And if you don't know that by now, let me be the first to tell you that you're in the reputation business here and you've got to keep, <laughs> you've got to make good decisions in front of your following and publicly so that people continue to respect you as a leader, right? Let me tell you why, okay? I have my team, right? And I have a uh, hit super affiliate. Could you imagine if I'm looking to go to a new company, right? Now stay with me on this example. I'm looking to go to a new company. Do you think I'm going to join the leader that has been in the same deal for the last 10 years and is still excited about it after all this time? Or do you think I'm going to go to the new person that is has split focus, that's in a bunch of different companies and doing a bunch of different things? Do you think I'm going to go to them and bring my team over there to this person that has divided their attention? Not at all. In fact, I'd be so terrified to put my team in front of somebody like that because I, I just think they would just get scattered and nobody would succeed, right? That wouldn't be good as, as a leader for me to put my team in front of uh, somebody like that. So if you're trying to get big networkers to join you, then you need to be solid in one deal and you need to be excited about one deal, right? Because if you're focused and you're excited about it, and you've been in the company for a number of months, and you've gone through the highs and the lows, and you've come out on top, that's the person they're gonna join. They're gonna, they're gonna stick with you. All right, moving along to our, my next point. Why, oh, actually I just said that. Why multiple MLMs ruins your reputation? I already said that. Next thing, you are a brand. You guys are a brand. Did you know that? If you're just choosing to be a professional network marketer, let me be the first to tell you this. You are a brand. Jenna Zweigel is a brand. <laughs> I'm going to read your names, right? Danielle is a brand. Sonia is a brand. Kai is a brand. Hillary is a brand. Josh Zweigel is a brand. You guys are a brand, right? All right. So now you got to start representing the way you want your brand to be reflected. Now, let me ask you some questions, all right? Of course, rhetorical, but you can think about this. What do you think of when you hear these big company names? Let me, let me ask you, what do you think of when you hear this? What do you think of when I say Coca-Cola? What do you think of when I say Apple or iPhone? What do you think of when I say Louis Vuitton? What do you think of when I say uh, Gucci? <laughs> what do you think of when I say Forever 21? I don't know, I'm throwing all these out there, right? Why? These are brands that everybody knows about, right? So here's what I think of, just off the top of my head. When I think about Coca-Cola, I think red cans. I think about that font. I think about um, the polar bears at Christmas time. That's what I think about. I think about their advertising. Um, when I think about Apple, I think about my computer and my phone and how like everything's connected. All right. And when I think about the, the clean product website, right, and how like spacey it looks. All right, when I think about Louis Vuitton, I think about leather, right? I think about their symbol that they have, the, their, their monogram, right? I think about expensive, right? That's an expensive brand. So what do you think about when you think about yourself? And what do you think other people think about when they think about you? Think about it. Think about people on your friends list right now. Think about it. All right. When you hear, let's, I'll use me as an example. That's fine. I'll go down for this. All right. When you think Jenna is Wagle, what do you think? Right. You think that crazy chick with all the different wigs. Some of you only watch those videos. Do you think hemp works? Do you think that she's been pregnant for two years now? Um, what do you think? Like you all think these different things about me. And that's because I've designed it that way <laughs> because I put out information that's in alignment with my current brand right that's i'm doing this on purpose the way you guys think about me is because of what i'm posting I, I post for a reason right now sometimes i have to delete my post because i get a little bit too far off my brand right and i'm humble enough to say that but the why i'm bringing this to you guys is you know you've got friends on your friends list right now and you're thinking about them right now this person is always negative Okay, right? Or this person is always posting conspiracy theories, or this person's always posting um, whatever like is on the news, or this person's always posting this way or that way or whatever. We think about our friends on our friends list, and we can identify them based on their posts. Like whether you think 
this way or not about your own brand. You're developing the association people have to you by the way that you're advertising yourself and your business. Okay, does that make sense? So you guys understand you are a brand, right? You're not just a person anymore. If you're a professional network marketer, you have to own that and you have to be aware of that. Because as you're engaging with people, they're going to start making those associations to you. And you want to make sure that they have good things to say and not bad things to say. Now, of course, you can't please everybody. And there's going to be haters along the way. You don't get to the top without a few haters. But as long as you're true to yourself, you're true to your brand, and you're true to your following, it works out for you, okay? All right, let's get to number three. All right, number three is master the mundane. Okay, I'm going old school network marketing here. <laughs> Robert Hollis knows what I'm talking about. He's been in the industry longer than I've been alive. Um, master the mundane, okay? Why do we need to master the mundane? Because if you can master the mundane, you guys, you can make a lot of money in this industry. All right? Um, because I know we think that it has to be exciting <laughs> at all times. And if it's not, then we're going to look for something else to do. No. If you want to make money in this business, you got to master the mundane. So I'm going to challenge you guys. Now, this week I already told you, you got to go build your vision board, right? So this is your next assignment here. Uh, you need to build your daily method of operation, your DMO. All right? Now, it's going to be different based on where you're at in your business. Okay? your daily method of operation. If your brand's banking new, it's gonna be a lot of hustle, it's gonna be a lot of reaching out to people, it's gonna be lots of messenger. If you're more advanced along the way, you've got maybe a higher uh, rank or a bigger organization, you're gonna be doing a little more follow-up, a little more training and team building and that kind of thing. So it's gonna be different for every person, which is why I can tell you what I do on a daily basis, but it's not gonna reflect what you need to do on a daily basis because I'm in a different part of my business right now. If this were my first day in business, my daily method of operation would be probably an insane amount of hours I'm going to be putting into this thing because I'm going to try to launch it as quickly as I can. And I like money to be fast, not slow, so I'm going to go get in there and get busy, right? So here's an example of my daily method of operation. All right, if you're not doing this yet, maybe something you want to write down. Log into your back office on a daily basis every single day. If you went to your office at work, uh, you would be going there every single day and you would be getting briefed every single day probably on the goals that need to be happening in your job, right? And when you are working a job, you've got somebody that tells you what to do every day. All right, this is what we're going to do. If you're the boss in that job or the manager, maybe you're the one telling other people what to do, right? So we have to kind of look at it in a similar way. When you're running your business, this is your job now, right? <laughs> Whether it's part-time or full-time, doesn't matter. This is your job now, right? This is your business you're running. So you've got to have a method of how you're going to operate every day. If you don't know what that method looks like, get with your upline or get with somebody that's had, you know, their feet wet in this business longer than two days. Go to somebody uh, that can help you build your daily method of operation. But here's an example of what mine is, okay? I log into my back office every single day. I'm writing down my stats down for the day, okay? Um, because I want to know where my volume is at. Because I know that if my volume is dipping or excelling or something's happening in my business, I need to be on top of that. Like, this is my business. This is my livelihood. If you have no back office IQ or business IQ, you better get on that right now. Every single day, log in. Figure out what your stats are and set your weekly goals. All right? If your goal is to become a 5K affiliate, whatever, like that's 5,000 in the month, break that into four weeks. Have your volume be your goal, but not just that, right? Here's the second thing I do. I identify pockets of growth in my business. I look to see who's who's uh, being a rock star in my business right now, who's not, <laughs> right? And I apply the 80-20 rule to this. So I'm going to put 80% of my time into where my volume is growing and 20% of my time into where it's not growing. You would think it would be the opposite. Like this leader is just, you know, falling off so I need to go try to save them and bring them back to life not necessarily uh, the best use of your time what you want to do is reach out to the people that are growing and get with them and see how you can support their business and make them happy 
and follow up with them, right? So look for pockets of growth in your business because if you go to um, like the rank page in your back office right now, it says this is your current rank and if you want to get to the next rank, these are the things you have to do and it gives you a list of who is in your organization that is helping you get to that rank. So I'm going to look to see where all the volume is coming from and I'm going to reach out to those people and see how I can help support their business, right? So that's the second thing I do. All right, number three is I commit to talking to 25 new people a day. <laughs> 25 new people a day. Now, you can put whatever number you want there. I don't know what your goals are like. It could be 10. It could be 50. It could be 100. Um, Aaron Parker, when he launched his business, I think he talked to 100 to 200 people a day. <laughs> like, he was serious, right? So it just depends on your goals. But the goal is to move these people along the three steps meet and greet identify their needs and offer the solution and the sale so I used to literally keep like a tracker of names and numbers and like contact info of people all the time and I would say okay David Grunning right I just started a conversation with him so very basic he is sort of interested or you know, maybe he's warm, cold, or maybe he's, you know, hot market, right, lead. So I'm going to move that person along my list. Next time I expose my business to them, I'm going to ask them, you know, more questions about what they need. I'm going to identify that need, and then I'm going to offer them a solution. I'm moving these people along on my lead tracker, basically. You can do this through your contact manager as well. If people are taking the pre-enrollee tour, they will end up there. All right, so talking to people every single day is a central part of your daily method of operation. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to plan training or leadership activities, right? I'm going to either come up with maybe, um, you know, some exercises for my team to do, a challenge maybe that I'm going to do in my group, right? Or I'm going to plan a training like the one I did today. Maybe I have to read a couple books or highlight a few chapters or create something where I can go on Facebook Live and, and deliver my training, right? So those are things I do. And then the other thing I do is self-development, personal growth. This is non-negotiable daily method of operation. If personal development's not in your plan right now, it needs to be in your plan. And it has to be non-negotiable because the more you grow as a person, the more your business is going to boom, okay? Because network marketing is a personal growth journey with a compensation plan attached to it. So now you know. <laughs> okay. So Josh used to tell me this when he was training me in the early days, back when we had three sprays. <laughs> and he used to tell me, because he already had success in his last company, right? So I had to ask him all my questions about MLM. He used to tell me this, right? He would say, this is how it works in network marketing. You ready? He would say, it's like this. Work, 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 work check work 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 check check work work check 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 work check 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 <laughs> did you guys get that and he was saying like at first it feels like all you're doing is working right you should work all the time and then boom there's a check at the end and then you work a little bit less and you have more of your check and then you work a little bit and you got a bigger check so that's how it kind of works in network marketing and it's super important to master the mundane in order to get there now i'm not saying that people in top ranks work less but i'm saying that they are less stressed out during times of need because they've been building their business consistently on a daily basis small efforts consistent consistently outweigh big efforts occasionally Am I right? Like if I get on the treadmill every day and I'm walking for 15 to 30 minutes, that's way better than if I sprint once a week. Am I right? Yes. So it's small efforts every single day that is going to keep your business booming, okay? Because the compound effect takes into place and eventually you see your results kind of all happen all at once, right? So it's kind of like, you know, when you're like losing weight for the first time like at first it's maybe not that exciting it's like one pound one pound one pound and then maybe two weeks later you're like oh my god five pounds you know so you got to just keep building your way up this is building a business all right so that's number three master the mundane it's not always exciting but this is your method of operation this is something you got to stick to and it's going to change as your business grows all right number four you ready for the money talk let's talk about it now, i'm not making any claims 
and this is going to be based on your own personal effort, no guarantees, all that jazz. Read the income disclosure disclaimer if you'd like. I don't have it memorized yet. Maybe I should. But number four is money is in the monthly orders. There's money all over our compensation plan. To be honest, there's eight different ways we get paid. But I'm going to talk about the binary for just a second here and break it down for you guys. All right. Now, Josh literally just taught me this uh, today. <laughs> I've been in the business for six years. And I'm going to be honest with you guys. I feel like this is an important thing for you guys to learn. If you don't know already, then now you get to learn today with me as well. And the reason I never learned this before is because I'm married to Josh and I would just ask him to do math for me. <laughs> so if you're not living with Josh, you have to do your own math. I'm sorry. All right. So here's how we do this. If you guys want to know how to build a bigger binary check than what you currently have right now, binary check is your monthly check. It's based on your reorders, okay, your second orders and beyond after you become binary qualified. You have to be binary qualified in order to take part in this part of the compensation plan. All right, so let's talk about that real quick. I'm not going to go into too much in depth, but I'm going to explain it in the easiest way possible. If you've ever seen um, the comp plan trainings out there, go watch them. Hopefully they can clear up anything that I leave out. But binary, how to get binary qualified. You yourself have to have 40 PV, although I'm going to just keep it real, get to 90, because 40 is not going to be exciting after a while. <laughs> if you want to get to the bigger numbers, you got to get to 90. All right, so you yourself have 90, right? All right, now, left leg and right leg, 90 on each side of personal uh, volume with people that are underneath of you, okay? You got to have two people or... You can have a multiple amount of people, it doesn't matter, but they've got 90 as well. Your total group volume on both sides is 300 on the left and 300 on the right, all right? So 90, 90, 90, and 300, all right? Now, there's wonderful slides on this. <laughs> there's comp plan trainings on this. Go look at it, but that's how we are going to become binary qualified. You got to be binary qualified in order to take part in this compensation plan. Now, let me just explain something to you. You could just do 40, but you will only ever make 10% in the binary, okay? If you want to make more than 10% in the binary, if you want to make 12 to 20% in your binary check, then you must get to 90. You can do this by your personal order, or you can do this by getting retail sales as well, okay? That meets that qualification. This is important because, let me just tell you, if you had super affiliate volume, let's say, right, you had a million in volume on your weak leg, right, you guys with me? You, If you were a builder with a million on your weak leg, you would make 100,000 versus 200,000 in the binary estimated. So it's a big difference, it's almost double when you get all the way up to that level. Now in between, um, builder and super affiliate are a number of different percentages. If you go to the binary uh, section of our compensation plan, the whole chart is there for you, you can look at it. Here's how you figure this out. Why am I telling you guys all this right now? You need to figure this out because if you're trying to look in and set your goals and you're like, I really need to make $5,000 a month. I really need to make, you know, $1,500 a month or whatever your goal is, right? You got to know how to do this math so that you know how to do this. Here's how you do it. Log into your back office. <laughs> Ready? Locate on your dashboard, locate the lesser leg. You got two legs. It says left and right. Look for your weak leg. If your weak leg says zero, we got some work to do, okay? But let's say your weak leg says, you know, 100 or whatever. You're going to take the volume that's on your weak leg and you're going to times it, multiply it by your rank percentage. So if you're an executive, you're making 15%, right? If you're a director, you're making 12. If you're a builder, you're making 10. If you're a 500K, you're making 18. If you're, making, if you're a super, you're making 20%. Okay, so you take your volume on your weak leg. You guys listening? You guys hear me? Does it, you guys following me? I know this is math. Okay. Stay with me. This is the math class I was trying to warn you guys about. Okay. Take the volume on your weak leg and times it by your rank percentage. How do you know your rank percentage? You go to the compensation plan under binary and you see the list of numbers there. 
That's how you know your rank percentage. That's going to give you an estimated earnings in your binary plan, in your binary paycheck. Okay? Volume on your weekly times by your rank percentage, estimated paycheck coming to you. You got it? Does that make sense? Does that make sense? If you guys understand it, please tell me you understand it. If you don't understand it, just lie to me and tell me you understand it anyway. So I feel better about my teaching skills. <laughs> okay. All right. Everyone says yes. Great. Fantastic. All right. So you can work backwards from this, right? So you can tell how much you're making currently estimated based on your volume. So now you just have to say, wow, it looks like I need more volume here on my left leg in order to get this paycheck up higher. Now, of course, this is only one way we get paid. So you're going to have your leadership check matching, your personal efforts on your personal recruits, and your jump starts, and all the other ways as well. But this is how you figure out your binary check. So now you guys understand how to figure out your binary check. So you have that power, you have that knowledge to go out there and figure this out. So that if anybody on your team is like, hey, I need to make this much a month, you can just literally just take this little section out of the binary and figure that out. You take your volume in your week leg, times it by your rank percentage, and that's going to give you estimated earnings. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. I'm so excited. I'm so glad we survived the math together. All right. Let me get on to number five. This is our last thing, and we're going to wrap this thing up. This is my favorite thing. I'm going to try to speed through it because I know we're running out of time, but here we go. Number five. Let me just recap real quick. Number one, long-term vision. You got to have vision. Number two, become a, a professional network marketer. Number three, master the mundane. Number four, money's in the monthly orders. What does that mean? It means get everybody on auto ship, okay? Auto ship, that's the secret right there. You need to get as many auto ships on your weak leg as possible. All right. Number five, build your fail safe. Ready for this? Build your fail safe. Do you guys know what a fail safe is? By definition, a fail safe is a system or plan that kicks in when something goes wrong. All right. I'm asking you guys now to be proactive in your business instead of reactive in your business. This is the part where we think ahead. Okay. This is the part where we have been building a garden in our backyards this whole time, and now we don't need to stand in lines at the grocery store because we planned ahead. <laughs> okay, this is our fail safe. This is our plan. Listen, being entrepreneur entrepreneur is messy. It's not always perfect. It's really not. It's so messy sometimes. There's ups and downs, there's highs and lows. You're gonna encounter the wildest things you ever thought possible. In fact, we're encountering the wildest thing in our lives right the second. <laughs> Do you know what I'm saying? So we gotta be proactive, not reactive. So you need a fail safe. That's number five. Here's your fail safe. What do I mean by that? Um, when your leaders quit, what's your plan? Um, when the world goes on lockdown, what's your plan? When you're not motivated anymore, what's your plan? What's your fail safe? When you lose your job, when you lose your rank, when you find something you don't like in the company, when you find something shiny in another company, uh, when my upline goes off the deep, deep end and I can't contact them anymore, or when Jenna posts something I don't agree with. <laughs> what, are, what is your fail safe when all these things can happen in your business, okay? Let's think about that for a second. I literally built this into my business early on. I had a fail safe for everything. I already knew I wasn't going to be motivated every single day. I already knew that. Like, I already know. Every day when I get on the treadmill, I'm not motivated to stand there to begin with. I can promise you that. But I do it anyway because I built an action plan that even if I'm unmotivated for the day, I'm still going to get dressed in my workout clothes. I'm going to take those actions anyway, and I'm going to build that plan out so that I can just conquer it anyway, whether I feel like it or not. So here's some things to consider. All right? It's not always exciting. It's not always going to be easy. You know, we're on a high right now. Our, our momentum is on fire. Our volume is all up. Everybody's rank advancing. But what happens two months from now? What happens two months from now? If you haven't been planning ahead all along, right? What are you going to do when your leaders quit? Right? They're going to quit at some point or they may stay forever. It's one or the other. Right? Okay? What are you going to do? 
you have to consistently be building new leaders. That's the proactive thing to do, not wait for them to quit and then go, oh, my God, they all quit, right? Okay, number two, what are you going to do when you're not motivated? For me, when I'm not motivated, I have a plan of action in place. My action is I need to dive into a new book. I need to blast a different song. I need to get into a different vibration so that I'm back on track again. What are the things you're going to do to kind of bring yourself back into where you need to be? I remember my why. Remember why I started. I put that everywhere, right? In the, in the, in my, put it on my vision board so that I see it, so that the days I'm feeling drained and exhausted from my business or from life in general, I remember exactly what I need to do to get back on track. What do you do if you lose your rank, right? You go full time. You go back to square one or you go back to, you know, the hustle mode, right? Uh, what are you going to do when negativity takes over your team? Has this ever happened to you guys before? What happens when uh, drama starts? This is a, literally, this is a social business. Like, you cannot stop people from socializing in this business. There will be negativity. There will be drama. It's all part of the game. <laughs> it's all normal. It's annoying. But what do you do when it happens? For me, I shut it down right away. I just shut it down. I go, nope, we're not doing that. We're not, not in this group. Nope, we're not. If you're going to be drama in my group, I'm kicking you out. Bye. Because I only want focused, excited, uh, motivated people in here. And if you're having a bad day, get out of my group. Come back when you're better, right? you got to have a plan of action of how you're going to be as a leader. Okay, with your volume going down, what are you going to do? Don't wait for your volume to go down. <laughs> you can expect there will be fluctuation in your volume in your life. You can expect that. So what is the plan of action when this happens? What system kicks in when this happens? You got to mix things up. Maybe start a new group. Maybe do a different kind of video. Maybe uh, find a new product focus. You're tired of CBD? Great, sell trim. You're tired of trim? Great, sell peak. You're tired of peak? Sell mantra. I don't know. Do something different to reinvent yourself a little bit. What do you do if your upline's not supportive? Oh my God, I can't do this business anymore. My upline just quit, you know, or my upline's only talking about coronavirus right now. What do I do? <laughs> right what do we do okay be the upline that's the solution this is my fail safe that's your fail safe what's your fail safe build it build a plan of action so that literally when things go wrong in your business you can go oh look at page three it says uh negativity i shut it down and i move forward and nothing happens and that's it like you can anticipate drama in your team you can anticipate craziness to happen you can anticipate it and because of that you can proactively plan for it and move right along and not be stuck in it. So I want to just leave you guys with that message today. Thank you so much for spending the hour with me. Thank you, Josh, for allowing me to do this training. I had so much fun with you guys, and we conquered our math class together. If you guys have any other questions, feel free to hit me up on Facebook, in my comments, in my messenger, wherever you want to find me, and I'll see you guys on our next uh, Tuesday training. Bye, guys.